Okay, welcome in to the Blood Prison Shakedown. My name is Vic Amosquita, owner of Blood Prison here at the Ohio State Reformatory. Uh, new podcast, thanks for joining us. Um, we're going to get this thing started off the right way, I feel. We're talking about Halloween, haunted attraction, horror movies. I'm bringing in people from all over the industry to talk about their perspective on, um, you know, haunting and what it's like to uh, start a haunted attraction and get things moving. And I want to thank everybody for joining me. Thanks, uh, Elena Ross. She's our person behind the scenes, uh, making sure everything's happening. My first guest, a very close personal friend of mine I've known for many years, and I know most of you are going to know him as well, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, David Great House. House, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on your first show, man. I'm honored. Well, we had to start it right, that's, so I figured, you know, who am I, right. I going to reach out to? That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> you know. So how you been doing, man? What's been going on? It's been a crazy crazy it's been good this year last yeah. year obviously uh stunk for most of us and, and right uh, it's nice that things are opening up and business is back in and uh, you know halloween's back in business and man it's good stuff yeah yeah i'm i'm super excited we were here at blood prison we were you know handcuffed yeah. for lack of a better term keeping a prison theme there mm -hmm. but you know um, we were. We were really handcuffed because we didn't know what was going to happen. So we got to open like a lot of other people. But um, it was rough. You know, yeah. all the precautions we had to take and all the yeah. extra things we had to do and everything. And then you, like even in the, in, you know, doing the movies and everything, uh, I remember you talking about, dude, we had to get home off this set and it was all in the middle of everything. And it yeah. was just crazy for everybody, you yeah. know? Yeah. Glad it's on the downtrend, you absolutely. know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. People are so happy to get back to their normal lives and yeah. do fun stuff. Normal lives, you know, for us, right. way different than normal lives for Very true. Yes. A, a regular person. Yeah. You, know? you know, it's like people say, oh, I can't wait for Halloween. And for us, it's, we kind of live Halloween all year long. That's in what many it is. Ways, you know, whether, I do. Yeah. You know, so never ends. 24 seven, man. Yeah, that's right. It's Halloween all year long. Yeah. For us. I mean, you know, it, it's, um, you know, some more than others, though. I mean, like for you, I mean, I kind of rolled into it, but like, you know, in your early days, um, I remember, you know, talking back in the early days of the shop with you because mm -hmm. I was just fascinated, one, about you touring with Mushroom Head and doing like that kind of makeup and then, you know, talking to you more. It's like, um, when did you like, what was your first real like influence for Halloween? I remember you telling me like teen years, like doing one in your garage and yeah. is that's how it rolled. Yeah. Well, it started earlier. The horror influence was, I mean, three, four years old. It, it, it was, there was no pivotal moment for me in horror. Like I, as a toddler, I was, you know, and of course my parents and grandparents reaffirmed this through me, through stories throughout my life. You know, I was like three years old, you know, first words, you know, I want a skeleton or I love the wolf man or, <laughs> yeah. you know, just like childhood fascination towards the monsters, you know, right. um, that's really where it began for me. So I don't know what triggered that. I was literally born loving scary faces, you know, yeah. uh, the Halloween, the haunted house, the Halloween stuff, you know, obviously we went trick or treating as a kid and that was great fun. But um, the first haunted house that really kind of grabbed me was in first grade. Mm -hmm. um, there was a boys club haunted house in um, the Slavic Village neighborhood off of Broadway. And the boys club were putting on a haunted house and they put a poster up in our grade school. You know, and we were just, I just started school. It was, you know, first grade, September, October. Right. And, I remember going back to class and drawing my own haunted house advertisement, you know, mm -hmm. like, and all the kids were like gathered around me to see, watch me draw, you yeah. know? So that was like my first like advertisement for my haunted <laughs> house at six years old. Um, we went to the boys club haunted house uh, with my mom and, um, you know, it was just, I, I just remember like being really interested in seeing all the monsters there. Oh man, they're going to have Frankenstein there and the sure, wolf yeah. man's going to be there. And you know, yeah. so it was really exciting to me, but as cool as that was, what really grabbed me was the same year. I think the same, it might've been the same night and we're talking 1976 here. So my mind's a little cloudy, yeah. but there was a neighborhood kid, a bunch of teenagers down the street that had this old vacant back house that, you know, it's like five doors down and they put on a haunted house for the neighborhood. Wow. Day, you know? And I did not get to visit that 
that particular was like a one night only and we were going somewhere else. But I remember seeing like this little homemade sign in the front of the yard with a green light on it, haunted house, you know, <laughs> like, and that alone like spun my imagination. Yeah. Uh, just imagining what's in there, yeah. not seeing it, but imagining it. So that was like the first idea of like, oh, you can do your own haunted house and, you know, and bugging my mom, she was the one that said, well, we'll do one. You know, we'll do a haunted house here. So it was her idea. Yeah, um, that's great. And I just ran with it. Now, it started in the basement. And at first, it was just for fun, just the kids, just like yeah. we'd hang up some sheets. And uh, I had, uh, I mean, started collecting masks at probably the age of six or seven. That's was, great, yeah. Um, I was fortunate. My aunt owns Starship Earth uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, a leading costume, mask, makeup, theatrical store. Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, it was a neighborhood store. So going in there, they would always gift me or I was able to, you know, parents would able, you know, save some money and I'd get a rubber mask, you know, and then next year I'd have two and then three and, you know, and then a black light and a strobe light for Christmas. And so like I was accumulating year after year, my haunted house kit, you know, like, well, I got the lights, I got the mask, I got the makeup. Um, and we started doing it for fun in my basement. And then uh, about the age of, I uh, was 12 years old. And I've been doing this just every year just for fun. But mm -hmm. 12, uh, we started. I started advertising it and started charging the mission. So it was 50 cents to go through the basement haunted wow. house. My mom collected the money. You know, 50 all, cents. 50 cents. Yeah. All the neighborhood kids, you know, like I'd six to eight to 10 of them would all gather. And um, I designed and directed this haunted house in my basement. And it became quite famous in the neighborhood. Like, yeah. you know, I was making, you know, 50, 60, 70 bucks, you know, <laughs> as a, as a child, you know, yeah. 10, 11 year old kid. Hell yeah. Um, so we'd advertise it. I'd make flyers and would go, you know, flyer, dress up in costume, walk the streets, putting in them on telephone poles and putting them in seven elevens. And, um, it became up until I was 14 years old. That's what I did. It was the blood dungeon. The blood Not dungeon. Not to be confused with blood prison. But <laughs> That's it, where I got it. You it, inspired it. It was the blood dungeon. And yeah. um, that was it, man. We had a great time doing that. And you, know, you know, kids still talk about it today. I'm sure. And that's that's the... Um you know, the authenticity that we don't, we can't get anymore. I was talking with a guy outside one. Uh, this was just last season, actually. And we have a guy out front. And he's a slider, and he and there was this group of people, and they didn't see him coming. And I'm standing there talking to this guy, and he runs up, and he slides behind these people, and they just mm -hmm. separated like the red. scared yeah. the hell out of yeah. him. And I was like, you know, <laughs> like we were laughing, you know. And the guy was like, man, can you, can you, don't you wish that you still had that, that feeling going up to a haunted house that you were like that scared? Oh yeah. Because back then, now granted, I wasn't. I mean, the first haunted thing I went to, I was probably like seven or eight. Mm -hmm. I was legit scared. Like, oh, I yeah. thought I was going to die. Sure. You know, a guy jumped out of the tree with a chainsaw, started chasing us. Yeah. And we just like, yeah. you know, so it was like that, you know, it's it's hard because when they come to the, like for ours, for instance, they see the building and they get kind of, oh, that's kind of weird. But everybody knows now that it's, you know, right. that it's actors and yeah. then there's, you know, special effects and lighting yeah. and audio and all that good stuff. But back then, right. it seemed more, you know, with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and, you know, those kind of movies where it just seems so real. Yeah. You know, that it was just, you know, burlap masks yeah. and, yeah. you know. Yeah, the haunted houses. It was like, okay, I, I understand now that these are just people, as yeah. my mom would say. Yeah. Um, well, that's scary even more. These are some crazy people. <laughs> exactly, you know? right? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Take and it from you. Take and, it from uh, you. And that's still today. Like, okay, yeah. yeah, they're wearing a mask, but who is under that mask? He's a real psychopath, you know. Yeah. And then there's always those, you know, I remember the old... Um, or rather, I remember hearing this first when I was a teenager. Um, the the haunted attraction or haunted house, if you make it through, oh, yeah. you get all your money classic, back. Classic story. I'm like, you know, and everybody yeah. asked me that. And I'm just like, I've never actually <sighs> been to a haunt where they're like, if you make it through, you get you because it's like, yeah, how do you do that? You yeah. know, 
Yeah, man, that urban that legend's been going on as long as I can remember. And yeah. I'm talking, I mean, yeah. yeah. And it, it was even then there were holes in the ground yeah. that you'd fall through, trap and there was doors. like trap doors, yeah. and you're crawling through a tunnel, and then they let <laughs> live rats out, and yeah. like all of these great urban stories. And then I remember meeting before meeting other people from other cities and states at haunted houses. I remember meeting uh, went out to Los Angeles one time, and I met these kids from Chicago that were doing haunted houses, and they told me that there's this haunted house in Chicago that if you make it through, you'll get your money back. And there's trap doors and they yeah. call through, all the same stories. So it's like a yeah. universal urban it's legend. Everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's great. Here. Yeah. It's great. So then we, I never got to do this and I wish I, I would, would have been able to do this. I remember when you took them up a few, I think it was a few different times, but I was always either mm-hmm. out of town or something was going on. Mm-hmm. So you then, Tell me about the transition into like the Legion of Terror, Blood, Blood View, mm-hmm. um, because you're kind of you know legendary up there as well. Um, how did that happen? How'd that come to be? Well, you know, I I was doing my own, you know, up until I was 14, I was doing my my Blood Dungeon, and I knew I kind of outgrew it. Like there was no more. I kind of maxed out what we can do with the basement, and I knew I wanted. I would love to uh, went go to a professional haunted house. And there was a, um, a witchcraft store in the neighborhood mm-hmm. that just opened. Um, and, um, of course I visited and, um, I became friends with the, uh, the owners and they said, Hey, we're, you know, besides, uh, helping them at their store, they were selling mask and makeup and, um, uh, Hey, we're supplying the makeup for Bloodview haunted house. Mm-hmm. And I had already been to Bloodview. I was a fan. It was thought it was one of the best haunted houses that I'd seen in my travels of visiting other haunted houses. And um, I was immediately like, hey, we'll give you the phone number of one of the characters. And so, you know, this was, uh, I was 15. This was 85 and um, called up a uh, gentleman and said, hey, we're doing construction uh, at Bloodview. And this is like late August, early September. Come on up immediately. You know, like my mom drove me, dropped me off. And uh, they hand, you know, it's like, hey, here's a paint can, you know, here's a hammer and some nails and do this, do that. Here's a laundry list of things. And I was in heaven immediately. And I had not, this haunt had not opened yet. I was not officially inducted or anything. Just helping out, like paint the walls and, and, and nail up some drywall. And I loved it. And it was like, this was my new home. It was the best thing I'd ever done. And then, of course, like a month later, it was time to, um, Legion of Terror was just forming. Uh, they had spun from an old group called the Knights of Frights, and they're regr- regrouping as the Legion, and uh, became a member immediately. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, I came in, you know, I had here's my here's all my pictures of all my makeups, and so I, I came in like ready to go. I was like Mr. Professional at that time. <laughs> like, I'm you know right. I'm ready to do this, and um, I had already been doing makeup for years, going up all the neighborhood kids. So there it was. I was on the ground floor of the Legion of Terror, you know, in their developing year. And um, I, every night and got all the awards. And um, a year later, I was in charge of this, the sets and the props. I was 16 wow. years old. And like, you know, and it's an election officially, you know, everyone gets voted on, you know, whoever gets the most votes gets the job. Yeah. And I got the job as sets, Lord of Sets and Props. Wow. And at 16, and like I started developing, you know, the rooms and decorating. And, sure. And, you know, just a year and a half ago, I was just starting off. So I really, I just took to it immediately, you know, I yeah. really did. And it was not a, it was like a destiny. I knew I was going to excel at it. I knew that was in my blood and all that stuff. So there was no sure. like growing pains in it. Like I just took to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you ended up doing the, um, you did a documentary on it. Yeah. Yeah. Years. Yeah. I mean, obviously that was, you know, years of, uh, uh, the documentary, man, you know, I mean, we're jumping ahead in time, but I w- did years of, of the Legion and in Blood View, and then I moved to Los Angeles to pursue a career in special makeup effects Right at 21. And then um, at the age of 25, um, I was working on set in Czech Republic and Slovakia. And we're flying back to America. I was on uh, working with Andrew Devoff of uh, Wishmaster. Uh, Wishmaster fame, yeah. and uh, he was on a film called Nemesis Four. Met him, and um, so on the way back, they say, "Hey, we've got a layover. You know, if you want to do a layover, we'll hook you up with a layover. If you want to stop anywhere before you get to California." And I said, "Oh, it's Halloween time. We ended this movie. It's like the twenty seventh of October." 
And I'm like, boy, it'd be great to stop back in Bloodview for a visit. You know, I hadn't been sure. there in years and uh, just surprise everybody to show up and uh, spend the weekend there. So I did. I just dropped in. And that was that year was the year where I just like, I, I had seen like a new group of people and um, I was blown away. I was like, wow, these, these guys, this is like the best haunted house that I've been to. Like these performers nice. are outrageous. Like yeah. it was like a whole new cast of characters plus my old school fa- friends and family. Um, and I just, you know, I was already in the movie. I was looking for a movie to do and it just hit me, man. Like, hey man, let's do a documentary. Like come back to Cleveland uh, and film a documentary just you and a camera and interview your friends and behind the scenes and that's where the the documentary started was just visiting and being really overwhelmed by how cool it was it was cool and yeah, um, i got a copy well then the movie you know obviously the movie is still like i finished um draft one in 99 you know draft two in 09 that's probably the one I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the the DVD, and then I'm I'm now looking at dusting off draft three. Hopefully, really? the, hopefully wow. the final, oh, the finished draft. Um, yeah, I want to revisit it. Yeah, it's the same movie, but I it just there were th- things on the second draft that you know need updated or it right. bugs me or you know I just want to make it available for streaming and other other departments in that field. So yeah, I want to dust that off again in the so, future. So I remember you telling me about the. Um, because I've got, you know, and that's the, that's the great thing about having you on, is I've got so many great house stories that I've heard over the years from touring to movies to Halloween. You were on, you did, a, I don't know, was it a, a few dates or whatever? You did this OzFest haunted attraction thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was an 03. Now, I, I, man, I went on the road with Mushroom Head, which was a blast. Of course. And we did OzFest in 02, which was a blast. Right. Like one of the greatest times of my life that yeah. summer. And um, just being there, and it just had this, like, carnival-esque feeling to it, OzFest did. And I'm yeah. like, boy, it'd be cool if there was a little haunted house that you can, you know, Would go be, through yeah. on the midway. And that's where it started. Like, okay, that idea. And then, like, I had this like, kind of idea of, like, wow, well, let's just take a truck and turn it into a mobile haunted house that unfolds tent style and um, decorate it on the inside. And we put a vortex tunnel in the truck and... and um, Few of my friends from from the Legion. So the following year, I, I contacted Ozfest and it's like, "Hey, what about a haunted house?" And they said, "Sure, can you provide one?" I'm like, "Yeah." And I, I at that time, no. Yeah. When I went back to the the Bloodview people and I pitched it as a second attraction to Bloodview when it was right. all done, I just wanted to take it on Ozfest and they basically could have it afterwards. So it you guys, out for everybody. it worked out for everybody yeah. and. Um, Sort of. Uh, <laughs> it was a rough road, let me tell you. Yeah. I mean, there's. Uh, I mean, I can spend an hour talking about nightmare stories on that tour. Yeah. But we did. We did about. Uh, I think about ten shows or something like that on us. We wanted to do the whole tour. Oh man, the truck would break down. Uh, we'd get in and like we didn't have our permit for a certain city or truck would break down again and then uh, you know uh, oh we can't go out to the west coast because. There's so many dates. So we just focused on, like, we did Texas, and we did Massachusetts, and Michigan's, and, and you know, Ohio's. Right. But we got a taste of it. it. We didn't do the whole tour. Right. But we got enough to get our asses kicked and yeah. said, we've had enough of this. Yeah. <laughs> Ten but dates, it, I'm sure, yeah. It was a wild. I mean, you're driving all night, and then, you know, the setup of it was physically demanding. Right. Because it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like you push a button, you know, on an RV and the whole thing, yeah, and it you just, know, expands whoop, out. There you go. It's like yeah. a lot of muscle work and those, we really worked the crew. And then after, you know, setting up for, you know, starting at five in the morning to set up, you know, uh, you know, you're open at nine, like doors are open, meaning wow. you're open for business at nine yeah. in the morning. That's crazy. When the fans come in and then until the second, we were near the second stage and then we wrapped up at about 4.30 when the second stage closed. Okay, oh, that's you know, not bad. Yeah. Okay, we had a couple times where we did main stage. We were open all day, okay? Yeah. Which it's a was, long day. Oh, well, it was a long day. Yeah. Absolutely. And, I mean, you're just like sweating. You don't, I mean, we basically, we just had our shirts off, and we were just covered in white grease paint and blood. Like, <laughs> like that was the extent of our makeup. Like, yeah. There's nothing else you could do. Right. It was just like drenched sweat. So did you act in that haunt as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, you know, I'm the barker, the greeter. You know, come on in. 
And we had, I think there was like five of us, you know, four to five of us on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Hardcore crew, though. Yeah, but it takes someone hardcore to do all that because that's just Absolutely. Oh, man. It, it, nuts. It, it whipped our butts. See, we, we, it's, it's hard enough on us. We're doing, you know, being here at the Reformatory has got its, you know, obvious pros. Like, for instance, um, Incarceration is going to be here this year. Yeah. In September, so we get to run for that, which mm-hmm. we've, we've done before. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, and this year it's, it's you know, the lineup is great because it's a, it's a crowd that, you know, will come and see you know, right. a haunted attraction, just right. like Ozfest. You know, because yeah. you know, I mean, we're yeah. all fans of the music. We're all fans of the right, the the entertainment and everything. Right. So it works out. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, absolutely. You know, Slipknot, Rob Zombie. Yeah, uh, they're kind of okay. haunted house type yeah. bands, and uh, they fit perfectly. Yeah, I, I think so. It's going to be fun. Yeah, you know, and again, after last year, every, I think everybody's ready. Oh man, you know, for everybody's live ready shows, for yeah. entertainment. Oh yeah, so I'm I just heard to... recently California opened up, so yeah. you know. That's kind of like, yeah, they're like the only ones I believe clinging. I'm not 100%. I'm not from there, but, right. um, you know, so that's actually kind of, yeah. you know, inspiring. Right. Be like, all right, maybe, maybe we're done with this. You know what Ooh, I mean? I hope so. So, yeah, but that's, that's good stuff. And then when you're talking about the makeup, you know, doing all the makeup and stuff. So when you're doing a makeup, I mean, what's the difference really, you know, in movie makeup and Halloween makeup? I'm assuming like it all transitioned for you. You know, the haunt stuff, and people ask, you know, how do I get started in doing makeup? And I always say, work at a haunted house. You know, you have yeah. the opportunity to do as many makeups as you want, and it's a great practice spot, and uh, that's where I really learned. Um, haunted houses are a great way to learn makeup. Now, getting into the movies, how is it different? Well, yes, it is very different. <clears throat> Sometimes you're working with the same materials. Um, haunted house, you know, like errors are fine, you know. you can, It's... There's really, there's not a, a huge amount of pressure, right. okay, on haunted house makeup people, right? Right. The movie business, there's a huge amount of pressure. Sure, a little more meticulous. Meticulous. Um, haunted house actors love wearing makeup. Yeah. Gore me up. Get it in my eyeball. Like I want latex. Yeah. I want I want blood running out of my ears. Yeah. And you get to Hollywood movies, like you know these are real actors, and you got to be very delicate around them with them. You know, contamination, uh, how you touch them, you know, sure. delicate fingers, mm-hmm. nice, be gentle. Um, and it's got to stay on their face. You know, Halloween haunted house people, you see their latex is half off half the time. So mm-hmm. It's ripped around their mouths and all yeah. that. Like, you can't do that in the movie stuff. No, so, yeah, you got to yeah. you got to step up your game as you do in the movies. Absolutely. But it is great. Like. It gives you that um, frontline assembly, you know, front lines. Here we are in the thick of battle. Um, it just gets you familiar with touching and next person. And so it's a great, great training ground yeah. for any makeup artist. Yeah. Yeah. And then and how far it's come. I mean, I mean, I like some of the digital stuff. It's not, you know, it's cool. But like, I just still love that old practical, you know, that affects, you know, sure. the appliances and everything. Yeah. Where did like, I mean... <clears throat> Most of the people I talk to, you know, they see, you know, the old 70s Kiss guys and their makeup and that's, you know, they love that. But like what in the movies, I mean, where was you, where did you say, dude, I want to do that. I want to make, I want to make somebody look like that. I mean, like an early influence for you. Uh, it would, I mean, the early monsters once again. Yeah. Frankenstein, Frankenstein. Wolfman. Yeah. The Mummy. Oh, uh, Lon Chaney. Um, yeah, I was say, like, what? Uh, those guys really what started, I mean, you know, <clears throat> it's kind of like the last of my generation of, of the old 30s films that would show on Big Chuck and, and yeah. Super Host and The Ghoul. So we were given, you know, growing up in Cleveland, you had three different horror hosts at various times. So, you know, before v- v- VHS and before mm-hmm. cable television, uh, you had to, like, focus on, on what was going to be playing on Friday night. Like, that was your goal. Like, right. Friday night is this. Saturday morning is this, you know, for, for Super Host. Or, so that was it. So Famous Monsters magazine. um, the, the early classics, man. I mean, I wanted to do those guys. And then um, their late 70s, early 80s, the slasher boom hit. Right. And then, you know, the Friday the 13th, yep. so all, the, all the gory film, Dawn of the Deads, um, really took me to the next level. Because then I, like, moved on from the black and whites and started binging on everything slasher, everything with gore, anything with the monster. And 
then that really became more of a profession because back in the old days, you know, you, you know, Jack Pierce or the Westmores, that was it. But now with the dawn of the new age of horror in the late seventies, now it became um, Vogue that we now it's a legitimate industry. Los mm-hmm. Angeles was New York was hiring. There were teams and companies of people doing special effects that were hiring young guys uh, across America were coming out to Los Angeles to work on these films. And, you know, The Howling and American Werewolf. And, I mean, those were big, The Thing. And all the all the early 80s monsters just like, I mean, the same story goes for pretty much every special effects guy. It's like the same story they're going to tell. Those films, like, made it a legitimate business. Like, okay, Fangoria Magazine, there's like a new effects makeup artist every month. Like, I... It became like, I can do that. And you yeah. looked at them, and they're like young guys with long hair. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that looks like me. I can fit into that, you yeah. know? So that was gave all of us the confidence to say, and they were, they were making one a week, you know? There was yeah. a new film every week. So yeah. then that became a legitimate business. Yeah. Was the the early 80s horror boom. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it was it was so, I mean, I was, I was born in 75, so I was kind of... <laughs> Into that, I remember as a kid, like we would go to my my buddy's house, well, it was his grandma's house, really, but we would watch, you know, a Friday the Thirteenth movie or a Halloween movie, and then me and my other buddy, we would leave, and we would we would get to this corner. His house was here, and my dad's house was here, and it was late, you know what I mean? And it was just like, okay, man, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, bye. And we'd run, yeah. you know, back to our house because yeah. we thought, you know, because oh, we, yeah. we were just like seven, eight yeah. years old. Why we were out that late? Who knows? But you know, we were watching old horror movies, you know, mm-hmm. and it all kind of led into, to um, you know, everything doing that, and that was kind of the fun thing about like even like the Friday the Thirteenth mm-hmm. classic, you know, Halloween. Yeah. yeah. What do they look like underneath? That? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. That Absolutely. they always want to yeah. know. Yeah. You know, now it's just you know, <clears throat> it's almost like you can't make, which you know, kind of sucks that you can't make the the same movie today that you could in 1980 mm-hmm. or 19. 19- 73. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because right. even if you try, I, I think personally, uh-huh. you know, um, like The Exorcist. Right. You know, like I still watch that movie and it's just like, damn, that's a great movie. Absolutely. I mean, I was shitting bricks when I first saw that movie. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was freaky, man. Yeah. You know, Linda Blair's head spinning around. Oh, yeah. It was just like. Yeah. It still stands up. It does. Yeah. I think it does to this day. Absolutely. So who then, like... Did you just kind of do it on your own, like as far as makeup from haunted attractions to doing the movies, or did you have like um, someone who like kind of showed you the way, or did you just kind of do uh, you know? Well, uh, apprenticeship type of deal. You know, in the early in the early days before leaving for the big time, um, I had my initial was um, myself was like the old wax and latex and stuff was pretty much me and what I learned maybe I read, read in a book. Um, mm-hmm. um, Dick Smith's book or Richard Corson's, um, but when it came when it came time to sculpting and making molds mm-hmm. and foam latex and things like that, sure. that was sort of the next level. And the guys, um, Mike and Jackie Westfall, the owners mm-hmm. of the um, the witch shop, the Village Witch, and uh, that sure. the, those store. He was he was in his thirties. And he was interested in special makeup effects as well. Right on. And so was I. And we became yeah. buddies. And he had a job. You know, he's a real guy. I'm like, hey, I'll purchase the ultra cow, the clay, the latex, the foam latex, alginate, and we'll start doing mask and prosthetics together. So he was the first guy that I did my face cast with, with mm-hmm. molding, with sculpting. And I... I was off to the races. Like I would sculpt one, mold it. Next one, sculpt one, mold it. You know, I, right. I was like, "Yeah, this, I got it. And this is great." But um, well, there was like an old, uh, uh, some old magazines on how to make a mold, and uh, you know, we followed that because he was doing it for the first time himself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then working with the Legion of Terror, um, a couple of those guys were doing sculpting and foam latex as well. So then, you know, you talk to them and and you're you're pretty much off to the races once you find out, you know, the basic building ingredients. So yeah. those were my early mentors was him and the Legion. That's awesome. And then um work with various, you know, people throughout the years in Cleveland. And then when I go out to Los Angeles, then you figure, wow, I don't know anything. Like these guys are like on a whole nother level right. completely. 
you know time uh, to start learning again learning again yeah. and then it, then your real apprenticeship starts taking over yeah and you know i owe a lot to the you know guys like dave barton and dan rebert yep and um you know steve johnson my first boss and um man you just you start meeting friends and you just look at their work and you see how things are done properly and you just get better at it you know and then like a year later you look at your stuff and your techniques and how far you've come. You right. Know, you look back like, wow, a year ago I was, I was locking all my molds together. My sculptures <laughs> looked the same, and now all of a sudden, like, right. Ooh, wow, look at you. You know, we're getting good <laughs> at this. It's obviously by being around creative sure. people yes. that were outstanding. I mean, top names in the business. Like I stepped in the door on day one, and the list of names are like Oscar and Emmy winners. You know, right. I mean, like guys that are still today like top of the business and those were all guys that i walked in you know helped me out and you know i I really can't uh that is so invaluable like it's just like yeah learning from them so yeah yeah, you stepped up your game everyone got you got better and um that must have been when did you go out to uh, la after you got done here uh, i was january 92 92? Yeah. So that was like, yeah, you're still in the in the day of, you know, it was the last last like gr- last year, a couple of years of what was like considered the golden era. You yeah. Know? I mean, like the the 80s were definitely the golden era, but what really started winding down was CGI yeah. and uh, you know, Terminator 2 had come out and the writing was on the wall mm-hmm. from Terminator 2, what was the future was going to be. You right. Know? Not just with Skynet and AI, but <laughs> right. also with CGI <laughs> taking over uh, makeup yeah. effects. You know, yeah. like yeah, that was sure. part of the end of us as well. Yeah. Now, obviously, it's kind of like uh, we we've carved out our own road where, hey, we're still we're still alive. We're still doing practical makeup effects, the yeah. old school way, and people still want to see that. You know, I do. Yeah. And if I'm making a movie, I want it. I want as much practical makeup effects in camera. Sure. Not an animation right. later, you know? Yeah. So I'm still, I'm still in, you know, trying to keep that well, and that's, philosophy alive. Yeah. And that's, you know, the, all the great, I mean, haunted attractions around the world, not just America, because they're everywhere now, you know, we're still holding that boat down too, because, you know, you can't do CGI here, you know, so we're still doing makeup. We're still doing appliances, Yeah, you know, which is yeah. kind of, you know, it's kind of cool because, you know, we watched um, that Netflix, what was it, army zombie army. Yeah. And they had some pretty cool makeups in that yeah. in that movie. It looked, you know, mm-hmm. it looked pretty good. You know, of yeah. course, Walking Dead's still on, and yeah. you know that that's I'm, you know, we yeah. know people on there that yeah. you know are still doing makeup and everything. Mm-hmm. You, can you imagine how many makeups you've done? What is there one that stands out to you? Is like, man, I'm I had so much fun doing this one, or I'm I'm really proud of this one, or you know, is there one out there from a movie or a, or a haunt that you worked at? You know, man, there there's so many, obviously. Yeah. You know, and there's so many. Um I did a makeup uh I mean I got yeah, I have I don't know, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of yeah. pictures of makeups and you know, I right of uh, from personal stuff to I mean it's like I don't even take pictures of half the no. all the makeups anymore. Like you just do them and you you know, like, oh wow, that was Clockwork. for a movie and I didn't <clears throat> even a photograph of it, you know, like Right. So there are so many. Um you know, it's hard to say I have a favorite, to be honest with you. So I don't want to, I don't want to, I mean, I, I'm like, I got 10 running in my head right, right. now. Right. Almost like saying, what's your favorite movie? Yeah. That's a little, I mean, yeah, I don't have a favorite movie either, but you know, I could say 10 of my favorites. Right. Or 365 <laughs> of them. <laughs> yeah. If you're following my If Facebook. you follow, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I saw that. I remember thinking, cause, and that's the, that's the cool thing about, you know, when I first met you, it was more. You know, we talked horror all the time. We worked at, you know, Creature Core, you know, with Robert Kurtzman. So we're talking horror almost every day, and that's mostly what we did. But just like looking at your list from the 365 influences, I mean, you had everything on there from horror to action to, you know, tear jerkers. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it comes from everywhere, I think, is kind of like the idea that, that I got from you doing that. Well, that's, I mean, I'm, besides, you know, obviously horror is a great love of mine and, you know, it's kind of like the dark stuff is what I gravitate towards. But, you know, I'm also just a movie fan, you know. And, right. And those aren't just movies that I like because there's another, you know, 3,000 movies that I like. 
You yeah. Know, I, have, <laughs> yeah. I think I have 4,000 DVDs at home, all <laughs> right? So just to give you an idea. Yeah. Um, yes, there are plenty of movies that I like, but those movies were the ones that kind of shaped me and what I wanted to be as a human, as an artist, uh, yeah. as a filmmaker, um, and just things that really kind of stick to my core and belief system or really change my life, whether there be a B movie or right. Shawshank Redemption, you know? So traveling down the timeline from, you know, work acting in a haunt, mm -hmm. running a haunted attraction, yeah. traveling on a haunted attraction tour. Yeah. I mean, you've done all this, um, then you jump into movies and it all goes, <clears throat> you know, it all goes kind of hand in hand, you know, for someone who like, you know, anybody that's fascinated with coming to haunted attractions or working in haunted attractions, mm -hmm. they kind of get an idea of, you know, what you've put in and what you can put in to kind of make something like that happen. I mean, what would you give, uh, you know, somebody that's just trying to get into it like you did back in the day? I mean, you know, how, how different is it? I guess is what I'm asking for from then to now and, you know, maybe any kind of advice well, you can man, give somebody. you know what? I, man, when I, I was coming up, like, to find another special makeup effects artist, yeah. oh, my God, I got to get to know this person. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm, can I visit you? You know, can I pick your brain? You know, can we share information? Right. It was like, you know, one, two, three, four people mm -hmm. that you found over a course of years. I have, I could probably have a thousand friends that are all makeup artists on Facebook. Yeah. Whether they're haunted makeup artists, pro makeup artists. Right. They're makeup artists. Yeah. They do it and they love it. I know a thousand people. Yeah. So, you know, a hundred at least. Easy. I mean, yeah, here easy. alone. I mean, yeah. the, so... Everyone does it now. Yeah. All right. It's cool. But, you know, the game has changed also, you know. I mean, my advice is, well, first off, you know, start off at the haunted houses. Take pictures of your work. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Build up sure. a portfolio. So whether it be an online portfolio or an old-fashioned, you know, book. Um, <laughs> what and, are those? Yeah, right? You know, <laughs> pictures, pages. Um Screen. And just, you know, and constantly um, refine your work. You know, the haunted house thing, you know, you have a tendency to kind of also get stuck with the haunted. Like, okay, yeah. just cover it with some blood. You know, right. it's kind of like an easy fix. Or, oh, it's a haunted house. It doesn't matter, you know. Like, right. Oh, it's dark. No one will see it. Right. Well, yeah. you, you kind of have to go past that. And you kind of have to start refining your work. Today is a lot different because the world of makeup is... Before you had a straight makeup artist, then you had the special effects makeup artist. Right now they they're, they're the same. Yeah, you know you got to do both. So if you want to stay in the business today, if you want to be in the business or right. excel as a make, you want to you know try your shot. It doesn't have to be Hollywood, but like wherever they're filming a television series, you know Georgia's hot. You know New Mexico, sure. Vancouver, name the spot. Ohio's not too bad either. Yeah. So, all right, I have to now do straight makeup, corrective makeup. Beauty makeup, smoky eyes, eyeliner, mm -hmm. eyelashes, you know, a nice cheek, you know, good lip. Be versatile. You yeah. have to be versatile. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Well, I also have to do an extremely realistic looking wound, or I have to make tattoos, or mm -hmm. now I have to do prosthetics, you know. And now, you know, the prosthetics now are so incredible. Like, you know, human, you know, there's still like human noses and jowls and ages, old age makeups, and that stuff's still pre prevalent. So you really have to, you got to step up your game now. Right. Like before, you can get away with being a little cheesy and still kind of get in. Right. Not anymore, I believe. Yeah. There's more, you have to do both. Before, you could do one or the other. Right. Now, the straight makeup person is also a, a special effects person and vice right. versa. So yeah, that's... <sighs> Well, I, t I tell everybody that asks me, and I'm not the guy to ask, you know, um, I got into this business mostly on the marketing side, you know, doing, you know, radio and stuff like that. Um, but just working with you and, you know, everyone else that we were around uh, once we, you know, when we were working together, it just seemed to me like, you know, because we had one, we have one person that is young and, you know, coming up. It's just how I tell her, it's like, look, I can't tell you technique, anything. You talk to, you know, <clears throat> anybody else about that. But it seemed to me like, you know, just go home and do something. Yeah. Don't do something if, yeah. you know, well, I have to do this because we're, we're opening the haunt, so I got to do this makeup. Right. Go home and do a sculpt. and. That's a good point. You know what I mean? That's a great point. You yeah. know what? Uh, here's another thing with, with the makeup business and, and, and kids today or adults today who's doing it. Like, uh, they think it's like an easy way out. 
almost. Like, oh, I don't have to go to college because I'm going to be a makeup artist or something. Hmm. Like, oh, I've done these great haunted house makeups. Yeah. Wonderful. You've done some makeups in the month of October. This is a serious, yeah, anyone can break in the business. But if sure. you want to stay in the business and succeed, you should be doing makeup all the time. Right. You know, I mean, if you're studying to be, uh, whether you're an uh, liken it to an athlete, uh, you know, uh, uh, a professional uh, professional person, a, mm -hmm. a doctor or a lawyer, you know, how many hours do they study to yeah. become masters of their field? How many tens of thousands of hours are they putting in? So if you're not able to put in your life's work, instead of going out Friday night, you're home creating something new, where whatever that is, right. then I don't, you know, I don't, you're just a, you're just a weekend warrior, right. which is fine. Sure. That's we what know, you want to do. Hey, that's yeah. what, but if you think, oh, I have what it takes to be on yeah. whatever show you want, right. man, you better step up for real. And you better work your ass off because it's a really comp competitive business. Sure. And there's a million people out there that the schools, like there's no schools when I was coming up. There's a half a dozen that I can name yeah. right now. Sure. And there's new students every semester and they're pumping them out. And then they're like, okay, let's go. And wow, the industry's crowded or, you know, or I, I did one show and I couldn't get another gig again, you know? Mm -hmm. So it... There's a there's an element of like oh I can be lazy and do makeup no you can't no. all right doesn't can, work that way you know you can pick up a guitar and strum and play the local rock club mm -hmm. or are you going to make it to the arenas you know it's like, that's <laughs> yeah, a long right? it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll there you go and the same the same goes for the yeah. makeup business or anything in entertainment you know yeah it's like yeah it's all fun and fancy and it's not you know oh it ain't real work well okay. Yeah, Fine. try and do it then. Yeah, you know it's long hours and you know a lot of there's a lot of challenges involved. That's, with you it. know, and that's that's it drives me crazy because I think like you said with any anything that's what it takes. Even from you know you know it's like I tell my daughter she's she's <clears> doing uh, guitar now and it's just like you know just you know you'll get there. Yeah, you know what I mean. You got to crawl before you walk, yeah. but as long as you keep crawling. You'll you should practice every yeah. day, and you know yeah. and the top great guitar players who I'm, you know, I'm a fan of. I'm like, oh, I I was rehearsed eight hours a day, or you know, yeah. Like you hear those stories, yeah. you know, Randy Rhodes and Dimebag. Oh, I spent yeah. nothing, I just locked myself in all summer. No one yeah. saw me all summer because I was doing nothing but play guitar. Yeah, exactly. And right, that's what happened. Yeah. That's right. So Fill you got to put in there. the hard work, man. Even if you're naturally gifted or have a natural art talent, you know, which a lot of people do. Yeah. Well, you still got to put in tough business, man. Yeah, for sure. You know? Any of it, you know, any entertainment. Yeah. Even now, just in, you know, running the, running Blood Prison, it's just like, it's cutthroat here. You know, sure. you go to like, you know, we go to Trans World almost every year, you know, and check that out. And it's just like the, the it's just yeah. getting. Oh, yeah. Be, I mean, the There's movie so quality, stuff, movie quality, everything. you know, yeah. everything's. Yeah. I mean, Ghost Ride, we got this from Ghost Ride. Yeah. You know, I pulled this out of the haunt just to <clears> kind of, you know, show off here, but it's like. You know, you check them out, and you know, of course, us at Creature Core, we yeah. kind of hang out over there, and yeah. you know, all those guys. It's the the game is risen. It is, it, and you it, know, it, it, man, it's just out, outstanding stuff, and you know, yeah, including this year, Trans World, and it's just wow, man, yeah. the great work. I'm like, it's good stuff. I'm like I couldn't have done that, you know. That's kind of beyond me, even, you know, or yeah. else, other people are saying sure. the same thing about us, or you know. So yeah, the stake is high. So you mentioned a little bit ago, um, you know, what if you're on a show and you know anybody knows you know that you did season four of Face Off. Yes. And you know, I've had people ask me because I know you. What was it like for House? I'm like, I don't know. You got to ask him about it. So let's let's find out because you know on the show when you watch it at home, which we did, you know, because you were on it and we were just like, all right, let's see what this is about. And it looked crazy. It looked like chaos. <clears throat> In a can. Is that what it was like? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yes. As an individual, not yeah. as the show producer, you know, it's <laughs> no, like, of course not. it's all cool and collective and, you know, running on as clockwork. But uh, as an artist, yes. And I, I went into face off thinking I was going to win it, knowing I was going to win it. Like, yeah. This is, a, I got this one, you know, like, psh, like have you seen my credits? <laughs> Do you know how many makeups I've done? Yeah. You know, like arrogant attitude. And oh. the, the the cast that I was on with um, 
was amazing. You know, season four guys are just like outstanding artists. And all the seasons, and I watched all the seasons. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, and they're great. Oh my god, look at you know. So I wasn't like you know, oh, I could do better than that, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I was initially saying, well, I knew I could hang with the great people of Face Off, and sure. I really didn't even hang with them ultimately. Man, oh man, yeah, it's it was really tough, and. um you know, you gotta you gotta be a fast, fast sculptor. Number mm-hmm. one, you know, like when you lay it down, it's gotta be right the first time. Yeah. And me, I like I like nursing a sculpture. I like you know leave it alone for a day or sure. bring it home or you know have to get drunk to work on it or, <laughs> or you know there's so many like yeah uh, personal uh, trials and tribulations that I have to go through, including today to do a sculpture. Right. And I've done lots of sculptures, but sure. I still struggle with it. These guys, like, they're not struggling, you yeah. know? And also, it's like, you got to be in great shape. And not I'm not just talking great physical shape, but great artistic shape. Like, dialed in, you can sculpt a large concept down to size. Yeah. And then, okay, that's, you know, what about, the, you know, we're doing costuming as well. Like, oh, you know, it's got to have hands and a chest, and there's a big spine popping out of its back, and it's toenails are crawling through so like all that stuff is like another step to do right and also it's like things have to take time to dry you know your mold yeah has to cure and bake out before you can open it you know and then hey at five o'clock guys all the molds are gone like if you want your mold ran in foam latex it's gonna be here cleaned out all right so try cleaning like molds with fresh water clay yeah out of a hot fresh mold it sticks you know it sticks and we don't you know it's not like power wash you know we're not like power washing it right. we're digging it out with popsicle sticks and a little running water your knuckles are bleeding and you're scrubbing trying to get it clean right because you have a deadline to you know get yeah. it out and uh so it's very very intense and when i when we'd come back to the our house our butts were whipped, man. Yeah. We were covered in clay, covered in plaster, and we're just like exhausted. Right. So yeah, it was a very challenging, very challenging show. But I, I was a huge fan of watching all of those episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, coming from, I mean, just well, just watching that show, you know, because I obviously had an idea of what you were going to be going through. You know, there was a few other seasons, so you kind of knew going in this yeah. is going to be rough or whatever. But in looking at it, it's like. <clears throat> I always hated, you know, first of all, like I don't I don't even like really watching a show like that because not not be, not a show that's got special effects, but I'm saying a show that where there's somebody judging somebody else, yeah. especially when like here's what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. We're going to run you through the ringer yeah. and we're going to expect perfection and mm-hmm. and if it isn't, we're going to basically ream your ass for it. And oh, that's yeah. just crazy. It's yeah. just like, you know, like watching them talk to whoever, you know, yeah. it's just like well, you really should have done this. I'm like, you know, you only gave them this much time. You know that, right? You know, so that's the part where, you know, it just doesn't seem fair or right. Or, but I get it. It's it's supposed to be a challenge, but it's like, like you say, realistically, the mold's got to dry. You know, the sculpt's got to dry out. You got, you know, there's all this yeah. time, right? You know, and it's just like name any show that's like that, and you're just like, you know, they're like, well, this would have been better if you're not this way. Well, yeah, I had this much time. That had to have been just like fucking crazy it was you know and i'm a fan of that type of show you know i was yeah. watching you know project runways and the cooking shows anything like kind of like has an artistic spin on it and you have a certain amount of time i was a sucker for those that yeah. programming as well like ooh, you know whether they're going to make it or is you know the whole dress going to fall apart before they hit the runway <laughs> so i was a fan of that format and i knew that it just was going to bother the hell out of me if i didn't throw my hat into the ring. Like yeah. if I didn't, even if today, like if we're talking about face off and I like the show is over with and I would still be a little, I'm haunted inside by not winning still today. Yeah. And it's not the winning. It's like what I did wrong. Right. Like things still bother me, you know, not to a point where I need medication, but <laughs> right. you know, like, boy, I, I should have done better on that. Yeah. I'm disappointed in myself. Yeah. You know, I, uh, it still irks me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, we should go back in time and redo that mummy. Yeah. Man, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm still mad at myself. However, I knew that if I did not participate in this show, 
that I would have been, I'd still be kind of salty. Like, man, mm-hmm. I wish I had jumped on face off. Just the show off a little right. bit. Right, yeah. And the TV, the like the television fame that, you know, you get from it is is real. Like, mm-hmm. you know, everybody knows you. Then all of a sudden, right. you know, you're in households across the world. You know, people are still watching it. Yeah. You know, I still get messages, you know, hey, I'm watching you on face off. <laughs> like, wow, great. <laughs> there you go. So... It was it was fun, and, and you were you were in the early years too, like season four, right? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. did three. And, this is season three and four back together. So I'd seen, I'd seen one, and you know, wanted to be on. And nah, it kind of took me a while to kind of accept it. And yeah. then, um, you know, so many great friends were on it as well. Right. You know? Yeah. And, um, and you made new friends too. I remember at uh, Trans World, you yeah. talking to them. Oh yeah, guy. Wayne Anderson, who was yeah. on my season, who was like one of the best sculptors in the business, and. Um, Great dude. Oh, I mean, there's so many. Yeah, we 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 create. I mean, you're living together. You know, right. you're eating together. You're sharing rooms with these people, and then you know, you go to the show and come back, and you know. So yeah, we made great friends. Absolutely, and I still love all those guys. Yeah, absolutely, cool. really do. And also, li- there's kind of like a family base of the whole season of face. Like all the face off type people have kind of like a bond with each other. You know, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. which you know you'd expect. Yeah. So, yeah, so on, um, you know, being in front of camera like you were on Face Off, okay, you were on a lot. I mean, in the house, Mm -hmm. on the floor, making the sculpts, doing the makeup, all that stuff, high pressure. You also cut, you've done music videos for numerous, you know, numerous videos you've done uh, for bands, for you've done videos for me, for The Haunt, for, you know, places you worked. So you're on the camera, you're behind the camera. What do you prefer? What do you like more? Directing, editing, acting? I like it all. That's yeah. that's number one. I like I like doing it all. Yeah. All right. That's that's first off. Sure. It's more you know, it's wonderful. Uh, directing is obviously my future goal. Mm-hmm. Stick stick with that. Uh, directing is very exciting. I mean, it, you use your brain and just in, in so many ways and it's an incredible a lot feeling. going on it's and uh, you know i've always i've been trying to develop myself as a director you know as as long as i've been probably earlier than the makeup you know because mm-hmm. directing is sort of like you know throwing a party or you know inviting a bunch of kids over to play you know in mm-hmm. your sandbox and this is the imagination that we're going to do and you kind of set the stage and it's a great feeling. It really is. And, right. Um, but on the other hand, you know, I like uh, <coughs> I like mixing it up. You know, I still want to be scary in front of the camera. I love acting. Mm-hmm. You know, I love special effects. I love. You wear the I, big suits. Wear the suits. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I just, I, I love it all, you know. So I don't want to like just, I, I never want to pigeonhole myself and say this is all I do, you know, because. Once I once I once I get that feeling of it, I want to do something different. Like right. you know, even after directing or something, it's like boy, it'd be nice just to like take it easy and just perform for someone else, you know? Or right. hey, we need a we need a severed head by five o'clock. Can you deliver it? You know? Or, so all the other little things that come with the arts, um, I really enjoy. Yeah, yeah. So I remember doing um, the. Uh, what was the the werewolf movie we did that you wore the suits in? Late phases. Late phases. Yes. What was it like wearing that suit? I remember your legs you huh. saying your legs had to be almost pointed just to walk around in that. Well, yeah. I mean, there were several versions of like what we did, the wear, like what yeah. we wore, and um, it's physical. First off, you have to be in you have to be in great physical shape yeah. to wear those suits. Yeah. Period. I mean, uh, once you put it on you. You immediately like, oh, because it just like hugs you so tight. You know, it's squeezing yeah. everything in your body and it's hot. Yeah. Very hot. Sure. Yeah. And now, you know, perform. And I remember like rehearsing for those guys up in New York and like, run on all fours. Oh, God, God. You're running on all four legs and you're like, <gasps> you know, hey, draw it again. Can you, yeah. you know, try it? Can you try it like this? <laughs> you know, yeah. oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> let, me just, let me just sit here for a minute. Yeah. Uh, so you got to be in great physical shape to, to do the suit work. Yeah. Yeah. Which I you know I, I I really enjoy, but I'm not. Um, I'll absolutely do more suit work certainly, but um, when you see the guys that really do it for a living, 
Like mm. they're like basketball players, you know. They got the physique of a basketball player, yeah. you know. And like, yeah. uh, I'm not quite there yet, but it's great fun. I yeah, love, I love uh, any time to play a monster, whether it's in a creature suit or a human based character. I love, love it. Yeah, love it. Looks interesting for sure. Yes. Yeah, you did the. Uh, did you was was that the meat monster you did? No, I, I rehearsed in the meat monster, but oh, I wasn't. Okay. I wasn't in the movie, unfortunately. Oh I right. I, I wish I was, but I wasn't. Right. But yeah. Oh no, you did the uh, the goalie dude. I did goalie golem goalie, for yeah. Uh, yeah Kevin Smith's yoga hosers, which was fabulous as well. Yeah, absolutely. That thing was huge. Yeah, it was on stilts, and I was you know like tethered by uh, you know like uh, wire and um, man, it was yeah that was a heavy heavy suit, and it just you know just rested you know you felt it in your shoulders and your traps, and like oh man you know oh man it's killing me, and you know one day where I'm in that thing for like twelve hours or something you know it was like yeah an cr- incredibly long day. And, uh, well, yeah, that's great fun. I liked you in, um, one of my favorite things. I mean, not necessarily your acting style or the movie itself, <laughs> but like just your makeup in clown town Okay, with you with that, that yeah. big grin, yeah. you know, cause I was, I was looking through some things. I'm like, Oh, the house have done that. I don't know. But I knew that one. I was like, and, uh, it had the trailer for that movie. And I mean, we watched it here. Yeah. You know, we used to run it here at the haunt, you know, right. like in our yeah. queue line areas, yeah. we'd run clown down mm-hmm. and just seeing, man, you just have that. You've got just like the, uh, one picture of you on, uh, when you're doing the Halloween shows up in Cleveland yeah. where you had the horns and yeah. that, that big teeth smile yeah. that you do. Yeah. It's perfect, man. I've got a good face for makeup. Yeah. Yeah. You really do. <laughs> it works out well. I'm a scary dude. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you tell? Yeah. I, it is. I'm scared right now. I should be, man. <laughs> I put the fear of you in you, man. It's like, uh, you know, my face is good for it, and um, I know how to work my face. And yeah. I have a large mouth, and then you add teeth, and just like, you know, you show me you mean business, you know, in your eyeballs. And yeah. People watch out. I always felt kind of uncomfortable, like work, like f- when I first started working with you guys, you know, just watching somebody do a sculpt because I can't sculpt. Mm-hmm. I don't do that. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I give mad props to all you guys that do it because just watching this brick of clay become what it, what you guys are doing. Yeah. It's just fascinating. It's yeah. just, just how the hell do you do that? I agree. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, and I, it's I, just same amazing. Feeling. And I'm, watching you do like the, uh, like when we first got here. And we were walking through the building, like looking at things and just like kind of seeing, like, I remember we were walking through and I'm like, who the hell is yelling? I'm like looking around and you're like in the back, just screaming and like jumping out of cells. And we're like, what the hell's going on? It's house. And I was like, oh, and then, yeah. and then you came to act, yeah. you know, a couple times yeah. and, and like just seeing you run out of cells and do your thing. And, you know, it's just like, I would tell people, I'm like, this guy's been doing it forever. This is what you need to do, you yeah. know? And it, it, people enjoy it from the other actors to the to the guests right. that come to the haunted attractions. You know, they, you can tell, you know, that you're into it, and that's just fun to watch, man. It's, it's you know, it's 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 not fake. It's real, you yeah. know. And and when I when and we when we came here, and there's an overwhelming feeling, you know, when you're walking into a cool haunted house or a set or whatever, and mm-hmm. like, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here I am. Let's get crazy. Yeah. You know, like let's make some noise. And that just that just comes naturally, you yeah. know. And so That's great. there's no, there's no time to be shy. No. You know. So yeah. You can do like, it in front of them, do it. Yeah, just do it. And you know, it's just a good feeling, you know, it's just like you have that adrenaline and you know, you get pumped up and you're seeing it and it's dark and yeah, that's that just grabs me, man. And you know, and I I start you know, <laughs> start like you said, screaming yeah. or making, yeah. doing dialogue or whatever. Yeah, and you're not even aware, like, oh, you know, I'm really like spooking the hell out of everybody or influence, right. whatever. But it's just like you're you're just enjoying being there. You know, I remember uh, over at the shop when we were doing the Mad Effects Lab. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I think it was probably the first, maybe the first season. I don't remember exactly which. And you were walking around and and you you know. Not being, I'm not even a scare actor. I, I like, you know, the, the extent of my acting in a haunt is like running one of the the puppets. You know, I'd run the werewolf puppet once in a while. You know what I mean? The yeah. big, the big actor controlled <clears throat> stuff. You know, I do that, but that would be it. But like, I remember watching you go over and like, you, you know, somebody be just kind of looking at you, and you'd you'd lean down and you said something to this kid walking up, and he just like, what the hell, mm-hmm. you know? And then you just kind of kept walking, and I saw you later. I was like, what did you say to that kid? 
and you were like, you didn't remember. You were like, I don't remember what I, which one. And I was just like, I was this kid out there. It's like, you didn't really like scare him. You just said something to him. A you, customer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you said something like, you go, they're, they're going to, they're not going to be scared of me here. They're going to be scared of me for the next couple weeks. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're going to be scared. They're going to be scared to go to sleep. That's right. You know, yeah. and I was just like, yeah. All right. Give buddy. them a gift that they're not going to forget. Yeah, exactly. You know, you think yeah. about all those people that you scared over those years. And, yeah. And I just know from my own stories, you know, like, hey, you know, we still talked about, you know, when I was a kid, you know, hey, remember that 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 monster, you know, yeah. got in our car or chased us around. And like, <laughs> yeah. We don't forget that guy. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I wanted to give that little feeling sure. to all the tens of thousands of hundreds you, of thousands you could see of it. customers that I've scared the, over the years, and I want them to remember me. Sure. Absolutely. Well, and then... With that, you know, because the movies have the same lasting effect, and you know, you've got this uh, this new one coming up, African Witch, yeah, yeah. That's uh, hopefully we'll see it this fall. I mean, not I'm on excited, a, not man. on a major. We're not releasing it yet, but showing it to at least you know festivals or limited mm-hmm. audience. It still has to be still has to be distributed, right? So like a whole you know, gamut that goes along with releasing a film that's very complex. And I'm just finding out myself, you know, the roads because I've never really distributed a film before. So we'll see where it goes, but I'm very proud of it, certainly. I got to write, produce, direct, edit, special effects. Yes. Yeah, and I'm still, like, we're in the mixing. We're in the final uh, sound mix stages right now, and um, I can't wait for the world to see it. And, you know, just when you first told me about it, you know, just, you know, up until, you know, in the recent weeks when we were talking, it's awesome how, you know, you went to Africa. Yeah, Zambia. You know what I mean? This you did Zambia. You, yeah, you didn't, yes. like, you make something in front of a green screen. Like, you know, that's what I, I'm so kind of excited to see about it because I'm like, you're, <clears throat> you're making this African movie. Yes. African witch. You made it in Africa. You yeah. went over there. You hired an African crew. Yes. You know, or Zambian, Zambian crew, yes. yeah. You know, and made it real authentic as a you know one hundred percent, yeah, one hundred percent authentic. That's amazing, man. It that's is just amazing. Like, yeah. I'm amazed myself <laughs> thinking about it. Like, <laughs> how did we do that? Yeah. Why did we do that? What was? Am I still alive? Is yeah. You know, for sure. I think I am. Oh, You're it's, here. It, it's very heavy. It's very emotional, and and so many levels. I mean, I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's yeah. probably my. I think my greatest project that, you know, that I've created, you know, certainly, and I can't, very proud of it. And yeah. I hopefully can spin on, you know, I want this to continue so I can write and direct more. Well, and finding those things that that you you plan, but then you find those things, like you were telling me about uh, the band you're using down there. Yeah. That was like, a Z- you got the Zambian band doing, doing the music on yeah, the movie. Yeah, yeah. Old That's, school band called Witch. Yeah. Which is perfect because I made the movie African Witch and right. the band is Witch. We intend to cause havoc. Yeah. And they it were was, the hard rock band of the 70s, you know. They were ahead of their time. And I fell in love with their music. And then, man, oh, man, it's like the soundtrack just worked out beautifully. Yeah. I'm so excited to see it, man. I'm yeah. like just super stoked because... I remember when you were prepping, like you were telling me about it, and I'm like, "You're really going to go to Africa?" And yes. you're like, "Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, I'm going to wild. Africa." Wild. You've been to India on movies. Yeah, let's spend, go to Africa. Spend some time in India. I'd love to go. Yeah, there. You know, there's there's so many other stories to to tell other than what your backyard, what your normal exactly. life story is. Yeah. So you know, find out. You know, you're learning of different cultures, of different people, and you know. The sky's the limit, you know. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, you can, you can, you know. I, I just think of you know, world cinema, and let's find out about them. And we can do spooky stories, yeah, in other countries. And it's it's something about it. It's more rich. It's not uh, you know the the suburban ghost house or the you know the American killer. Or, you know, there's we've seen those and they're fine, but there's yeah. there's other cultures and countries that we need to see stories from. Just the sheer amount of work that goes into it, let, just here, let alone trying to assemble all that. Was it hard yes. getting a Zambian crew uh, together? You know, not the crew wasn't. Uh, you know, I had I had good people working with me uh, that were interested in the project, and uh, the crew, for the most part, you know, came together pretty quickly. The casting, I was very much more. 
uh, demanding on. Like, you know, casting is everything, I yeah. believe. I mean, casting your crew as well, but yeah. casting the actors. You know, they say is that 90% of making a good film is in the casting. Right. Okay. So we did a lot of auditions mm-hmm. and hundreds, hundreds of people auditioned. You know, and we it was wonderful. Like, you know, like, are, is five people showing up? No, a hundred people showed up. <laughs> and you, you know, you look at them and you're like, this person would look possibly work for this character. Read the lines that we provided. Here's a script page. Yeah, we'd videotape it. Thank you. We'll call you next. Yeah. Thank you. We'll call you. And you're just like making notes, like who who you like. And so the casting process was intensive, and we cast it perfectly. We yeah. we we. That's. The movie is the casting, and for yeah. my, I mean, yeah, you got to have great camera work, you have the great story. All of those elements have to be in place right. to make a good movie. All sure. of them, but you also need it's magic in a bottle. You know, you're capturing magic, and different people would have would have brought a different vibe. So I'm really happy with the film, mm-hmm. and I'm really happy with the casting of it. Yeah, the actors bring it to life. You're That's not, great. you know, you're buying, you know, you're relying on them. <clears throat> Yeah. You know, all you're saying is cut in action, do it again. Right. Or we got it. You know, you're trusting them. They're the faces on the screen, you know. What was the, um, like what, I mean, you know, Africa's a giant continent. What what was Zambia? Was it the story? Was it a Zambian story? Or is it, you know, a mythical thing from Zambia? Or was it just? No, it was, um, I had a friend from Zambia, which brought me to Zambia. Okay. So, you that know, makes sense. I, I, yeah. that's why inspired me friend from Zambia who's a makeup artist was interested in me teaching makeup in Zambia yeah I'm like well I want to make a movie that's it I just said it well what's your movie about I think it's about and a young boy who lost his father is now a ghost and ghost lives with his strange grandma who may be a witch I'm just saying you know I just said the plot hmm okay I, I can you know it's that felt right. And I, I needed, I wanted to tell a story about a young boy because I could write in terms of a young boy being living with a scary grandma because mm-hmm. I certainly have. And so mm-hmm. in, in many ways, it's a personal story. It doesn't have to be Zambia. It yeah. doesn't have to be anywhere. It could have been India. It could have been Ohio. Uh, the difference is like, you know, we've seen the American witch a million times. We've seen the European witch sure. a million times and they're fabulous. But it's like, I felt like we haven't seen the African witch. Sure. In America, from American cinema standpoint. So I wanted to tell something that was kind of like a true story to me and a love story in many ways, a, a sweet, emotional, touching drama, but also scary. So I just felt natural to me, the, the living, the grandma and the young grandson. I just, just related to so many at, uh, aspects of that. So I wrote it. it. Took me a while, you know. I'd write it over the course of a couple of years while I was working, and just dust it off and go back to it. And it took a while, you know. And then we did the the location scout and went out there just to see, you know, first like, yeah. hey, how are we gonna, what's how are we gonna feel about it? So we went out for a location scout. We found our cast and crew, found our locations immediately. That's great. That's it. That's one. That's you know, they just all fell into place. Like, yeah, you know what? Shot a little test footage. Mm-hmm. We got a movie, guys. This is it. These people are perfect for this film. And uh, came back a few months later and shot the film. That's great, man. It was a good time, yeah? Yeah, well, you know, it was an intense time. It was a good time. It was good. I I had... I, it just pushes your body and brain to yeah. new limits, both in, in terms of your workload and how your, your brain is thinking. Uh, it keeps you sharp. And... Um, and then when you know you review the footage and you're like, wow, this looks really good. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, we did it. Congratulations. And and then the editing was tough. Um, COVID was tough. Uh, and now we're in the final stages of sound mixing it. You know, That's great. doing the 5.1 and uh, whole sound mix and um, bringing it to life. You know, every every detail has to be just like combed over so many times and. It takes a lot of work to make yeah. a to make a really good film. It takes a lot of work to make a bad film too. Right. You know? Well, hey, you know. They kind of start off 
they kind of start off, they're, you know, like every movie idea is a good idea. Like, yeah, that, that's a good idea. Yeah. Right. But is it working? Is that movie really working? Yeah. Who knows? Magic, know. in a, magic in a bottle, man. There you go. Yeah, and it all, you know, I mean, started from like you being just a kid that was into horror, you know? Yeah. Born into it. Born into it. Yeah. Man, and, uh, I, you know, I always wanted to make a film. I tried to make them as a kid, Super 8, vi- yeah. video. Right. You know, I never got far with it. Like, you know, I shot a scene or something, or I wrote a you know five-page script or something, or, you know, we had meetings and rehearsed it, but we never really got off the ground. You know, I wasn't like Steven Spielberg or something, making <laughs> epics at 12. Right. You know, that yeah. never happened. And then... Um, and then even moving out out to California, like immediately with the effects guys, all the effects guys were directors. Everybody yeah. wanted to make a movie, right? So you know we had that in common, and um, I started the documentary, you know, at twenty six, and thought I was going to go right into making another one. No, that didn't happen. You know, like you know, I'm, now all these years later, I finally got finally getting one off the ground. So yeah. hopefully, I can. I definitely want to do another one. Yeah, absolutely. It's a process, man, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready for the next one. Well, I mean, I hope this works out. I can't wait to see the movie. I know you're going to do something with it. And uh, I'm personally excited to see it because just like watching some of the stuff you guys did in the shop, Mm -hmm. you know, has me interested and seeing some of the images. I know you posted an image. Yeah. And that was, yeah, that was good. I mean, like when I saw it, I'm like, that's it. Right on. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm I'm excited for it, man. I can't wait. Cool. Me too. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to show it. Well, listen, man, I don't want to take much more of your time, but I appreciate you coming out. Absolutely. And uh, we'd like to have you back on, uh, have you back on some time, and um, good luck. And, of course, you know, Halloween season rolls around. You're more than welcome to come in, sling some makeup, get in character, and have some fun out in front of the uh, Blood Prison. I think I will. That'd be awesome, man. I think I'm itching for it. All right. All right. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Got it, it Vic.